for this morning's Mass for the souls of Thomas and Mary Kate Naughton. Today the church celebrates the World Day for grandparents and the elderly, and so we also are grateful for all those who have come to join us for Mass this morning with their grandchildren, those in person and those who are joining us by means of Net TV. We pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes? What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there were no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, Lord of the day, day I, I call for help. help. You answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your when I called you and 
answered me, you built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me against the anger of my enemies. You raise your hand. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O oh Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in, in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us 
to the final test. And then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him what he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door shall be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for fish or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If then you who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Today, the church, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, celebrates the World Day of grandparents uh, and the elderly. And in Pope Francis's message this year, 2022, he says, the World Day of grandparents and the elderly is an opportunity to proclaim once more with joy that the church wants to celebrate together with all those whom the Lord in the words of the Bible, has filled with days. Let us celebrate it together. I ask you to make this day known in your parishes and communities to seek out those elderly persons who feel most alone at home or in residences where they live. Let us make sure that no one feels alone on this day. Expecting a visit can transform those days when we think that we have nothing to look forward to. From initial, an initial encounter, a new friendship can emerge. Visiting the elderly who live alone is a work of mercy in our time. For this reason, as we prepared for this day, uh, I ask those who may be watching on Net TV, those who join us each and every weekend, uh, who may be homebound or unable to uh, attend Mass in their local parishes, to perhaps even invite their own children and grandchildren for Mass today, uh, either to come in person or to, to be with them in their homes and their apartments and to spend this moment with their grandparents. Uh, my own parents took this invitation uh, to heart and invited uh, their grandchildren to Mass today. A lot of my siblings, my, my two uh, siblings have events with their children today, but my brother Gerald and his wife Lorraine uh, and their, their daughter Maeve has come to be with, uh, with her grandparents today at Mass. So it's a, a beautiful opportunity for us to come together as a family uh, and to spend this time together. Why? Why is this an, a beautiful opportunity? Well, when I was a, a child, I'd be watching my, my favorite movie as a child uh, was Home Alone. Uh, and as I, uh, I remember when I was young, uh, in my room, I used to create some of the same booby traps that 
young Macaulay McCulkin, Macaulay McCulkin uh, had in, in, his, in his house uh, when he was trying to protect his house from, from the intruders. I would often string ropes to my door and, and like a bag that would drop down over the door and I would ask my parents to, mom, dad, come into my room and just see uh, if my booby trap would work uh, to prevent anyone from entering my room. But as I got older, and I think about that movie, think about the, uh, the message in which Home Alone is, is, is sharing with us. And I'm just gonna give you two more examples. Home Alone is a movie that, that teaches us in some strange way that a 10-year-old kid can survive a week alone in New York City or in his house in, in the suburbs protecting his home, his family, protecting himself, eating, sleeping, washing his face and brushing his teeth, as that famous scene when, when, when the, young, uh, the young kid is, is, in, in, is singing and, and blowing, drying his hair, and all he can do it all by himself. And, and, in, and in a strange way, it's showing that his parents, so clueless and so distracted by their own lives would forget about their only about one of their children now granted that that family had a lot of kids and they were really stressed out but not only did they lose him once they lost him twice and then hollywood made like four more of those movies that weren't as good as certainly the originals but um think about you know some of the the television shows uh, that our our children watch there's a show that I used to watch with my nieces and nephews, Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb is a show where these two kids are basically left to do on their own these creations in their backyards of, uh, of, of castles, of, of rides, of roller coasters, all without their parents even noticing what they're doing. Their parents just absolutely clueless to what their children are doing. Think about, you know, even more recently, this uh, show, which is uh, a craze on, on Netflix called Stranger Things, where this group of teenagers come together and are, uh, work together, really, to save their whole town from this creation of, of this other world. And each season gets more and more complicated and more and more uh, crazy. But, uh, I've yet to watch the fourth season, I have to. Uh, but I, I think of the message that it's showing that these teenagers are basically left by themselves without any sort of parental supervision and, and they themselves, the world relies on these teenagers to save them. And, and it's usually the adults that are clueless, it's the adults who are mocked, they themselves are sort of uh, made fun of in a way. I think of another show uh, on Nickelodeon called Jesse, where they used to make fun of the butler for being lazy and they would call the, the nanny old. It really, if we are mindful of, of our media, we see a trend that wants to discard or not take uh, or not appreciate truly the wisdom to appreciate the wisdom, the presence of grandparents, of the elderly. And you think sadly how many men and women who are residents of nursing homes receive so few visits. And as Pope Francis mentioned, let no one feel alone this day. I think that that in and of itself is an invitation for each and every one of us to think of someone that we may know who is a resident of a nursing home or a senior residence, to give them a call on this day and to let them know that they are being thought of and being, that they are loved, perhaps even visit them if their residences allow. You know, I think today uh, of how lucky my nieces and nephews are to be able to grow up and reach 
my, my eldest nephew in college and my youngest in, in grammar school, to be able to experience their grandparents on a regular basis. When I grew up, unfortunately, because of my, uh, my rank in, in, in how long I was, how late I was born in, in my parents' life, the only uh, surviving grandparent of mine was my mother's mother, my grandmother. And she uh, lived, as did all of my, both sets of grandparents, lived in Ireland. Growing up in New York, of course, uh, it's not like a, an easy visit to visit grandma. Uh, every summer, however, I was blessed to be able to go to Ireland and spend time uh, living in my grandma's house, in nanny's house, and visiting with my mother usually uh, for an extended period of time, like a month or two at sometimes the entirety of, of the summer. And, and in those encounters with my grandmother, I learned so, so much. And, and I think, you know, when we think of the, the gospel today and how the gospel is sort of divided into these different parts, the first is the disciples asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray, as John taught his disciples. And Jesus teaches his disciples the Our Father. Well, my grandmother, my nanny, taught me how to pray. My nanny taught me what it meant to be a person of prayer. My nanny uh, was obsessed with prayer, <laughs> obsessed. And I've mentioned this once before, I'm sure, but my, my nanny had on her kitchen table a stack of prayer books that she would begin in the very beginning of the day and she would continue through those prayer books throughout the entirety of the day. The only time my nanny would stop, of course, would be for tea, would be for supper, and would be uh, to watch, uh, to listen to the mass and to watch one of the game shows at night. I, and I, I think of, of just how her example of just silently praying helped me and inspired me of what it means to have a prayer life. My granny wasn't one that would say to, to all her grandchildren, of which she had plenty, to say to them or say to us, now sit here and pray with me before you go out. She didn't demand that we prayed with her. She didn't demand that we sit with her and do something that perhaps as a, a teenager or as a young child we did not want to do. But she sat and in her silence was an example of prayer because she just simply prayed. And she knew and, and she taught me by her example of what it meant to have an actual relationship with God. She wasn't praying to be seen to be praying. She was praying because she needed to pray. She wanted to pray. The second part of, 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 the, of the gospel, of those, this three part of the gospel is, is to teach us how to live. Which one of you would have a friend that comes to him at night and says, friend, lend me some loaves of bread for I have a guest who has arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And, and they, this person in the house would say, go away from me, go away. The house is closed, we're in bed, leave us alone. And Jesus says, I tell you, he will either get up because of his friendship or he will get up because of his persistence, because of the persistence of the neighbor what it means to live. My grandmother taught me what it meant to live. My grandmother was uh, in, in her time and, and her, with her love of, with her husband, had 13 children, 13. Some who died at a young age, some died uh, stillbirths. Others in their 19 years old in a terrible car accident and still another uh, because of an illness. They lived. They lived fully. They weren't worried about how each child would affect their lives. 
They weren't worried about how each child equaled a, a dollar sign or each child equaled, well, that's one less vacation this year, or how each child equaled a, a, another mouth to feed. And they weren't concerned. They lived. They lived fully with a trust in God. Albeit they were grateful, I'm sure, uh, of the support that they received from my mother and her aunt and my mother and her sister who, uh, who came to this country at a very young age to send financial support back home to take care of their families. But my grandparents, they lived. They knew what it meant to live and to live with trust in the Lord. And the last part of the gospel is about love. Which one of you would have a child who asks for a, a fish and you hand him a snake? Or who asks for uh, a, a, an egg and hands them a scorpion? You who are wicked, you who know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will our heavenly Father know how to give good gifts to you? How much more, you who know how to love, how much more will your heavenly Father love you? My granny in, in her older age uh, had a very hard time walking and, and, and moving around the house. She required a walker and she breathed very heavily as she walked around. It was very strenuous for her to, to do much movement. But I remember even with that, uh, it would be my same nanny who would struggle to get out of her chair to make sure that uh, in a cold and damp Irish house that she would turn on the heating blankets in our beds before we went to sleep at night so that it would take the dampness out of the mattress. This is the summer, by the way. <laughs> That's the kind of Irish weather we would receive. But and the same nanny who would, because of her concern that we would leave the heating pad on at night, would get out of her bed in the middle of the night, struggle to come into our rooms and check on us to make sure that we were sleeping well and that, most importantly, that the heating pad was turned off. She thought that she could sneak in the room, but when someone's breathing, <sighs> You really can't sneak anywhere. But she did so with love. She did so out of love. You know, our, our grandparents and the elderly are such great gifts for us and to us. And I think it, this serves as an opportunity for us to reflect upon our own encounters with our grandparents, our own encounters with the elderly who have taken such great care of us and concern for us, and to offer perhaps today just a prayer of thanksgiving for them. And if they be alive, how great it is an opportunity for us to call or, or visit them on this day. But if not, if they have already been called home to heaven, this serves as an opportunity for us to pray for them, and to pray for their souls, and to pray that they are in peace enjoying the eternal rewards of heaven. My friends, today we offer this day, this world day of prayer for the grandparents and elderly to say to them how much we need them, that we could not have done this on our own. As easy as it may have been for Macaulay Culkin to live in Manhattan for 10 days in Home Alone, as easy as it may be for those kids in Stranger Things or Phineas and Ferb to live without the supervision of their parents and grandparents, I couldn't. And if we're really honest with ourselves, neither could either one of you. And so let us be grateful today for the gift of our parents, for the gift of the grandparents, and for the gift that God has given us in the elderly. May God bless them, reward them for their goodness. May God keep them safe from all harm, and may God give them the rewards of eternal life. Amen.
we stand now and offer our prayers as we pray together our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Ask and you will receive, Jesus assures us in today's gospel, and so as children of God, we bring our needs before our heavenly Father. For the church, that we may imitate God's generosity as we assist all those in need materially and spiritually. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of our nations, that they may work toward the day when no one will be without their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the millions of malnourished people around the world, that a new day will soon dawn when they have plenty to eat and are freed from the anxiety that comes from being unable to feed themselves or their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our grandparents and for the elderly, that they may be loved and cared for and that the wealth of their knowledge and experience may be valued by younger generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Thomas and Mary Kate Naughton, for whom I offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers which we bring before you and answer them if they be in accord with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. There is only one collection today. We are grateful, as always, for your generous support.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saints Joachim and Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which, we, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd ask if you could just please be seated for a moment, a few announcements, and then a final a special blessing for all of the grandparents who are here with us uh, in person and all those who are watching, uh, joining us on Net TV. Please note, uh, please take a copy of the bulletin as you leave Mass today. Uh, we have a block party approaching, um, a block party approaching on Saturday, August 6th. Um, we really would appreciate your support, your help um, in supporting the block party by, by that means by coming, but also if you wish to assist as a volunteer, um, we'd ask you to please speak with Adriana Romanzo, who's here present, if Adriana's in the front, in the front of the church here. Uh, please speak with her at the conclusion of Mass if you'd like to sign up as a volunteer. Uh, for those, uh, we have received a few phone calls from people who are who view and watch us on NetTV who also wish to come and serve as a volunteer, so we're grateful for your support. Also, that same weekend, the weekend of August 6th and 7th, we will host a missionary priest from the Maranol Order. He will come to speak to us about the great work of the Maranol fathers, brothers, and sisters around the world. We thank you in advance for your generosity in the second collection on that weekend. Finally, uh, two last announcements. The plastic bottles that we handed out uh, about two weeks ago now for mothers in need, are due by Saturday, August 14th. There's a little basket there at the center of the church called the Bla Plastic Bottle Bank. Uh, you're welcome to drop your bottles off into that uh, little basket and they will be uh, distributed to the, uh, to the places that need. I'd like to now just invite uh, Fernando Torres, our youth minister, to come forward to make a, an announcement about an upcoming movie night for our youth. Good morning to you all here and watching us on Net TV. I have a special invitation for you all, and Father already said what it was, but on behalf of the Youth Ministry Program, um, we want to invite you all to our family movie night. Um, everybody, everybody's invited, especially our youth and their families, amen? Um, it's going to be on August 1st, which is not this Monday, next Monday, August 1st at 7 p.m. here, but downstairs in our, in our cathedral basement. Um, we will have snacks, soft drinks, and the movie we'll be watching is Jurassic World Dominion. And there's a special word that everybody likes to hear is that everything is free, completely free for you guys all. Everybody's invited. Um, everybody can, can join us. It's a, it's a day where we can join in, in, in community and, and in family. Amen? Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. God bless you guys. I will be in the back for anybody. For, I'll be, be in the back giving flyers and anybody who has any questions. God bless you. Everything is free. Thanks for paying, Fernando. We appreciate it. Um, it's a nice way to spend an afternoon or an evening on a hot, hot summer day. The basement, the undercroft of the cathedral is very well air conditioned. Uh, and we have a nice setup with a big projector and, and uh, good speakers for uh, a movie night. So thank you to Fernando Torres, our youth minister, for putting that together. Finally, now I'd like to ask all of the grandparents who are here present to please stand for a final for a blessing. Just the grandparents here present. Some of you are too young to be grandparents, so. How beautiful. And our deacon as well is a grandparent. He's, we've missed him at our Sunday masses recently. He was visiting his children, his child and his grandchildren. Um, and his wife as well, Martha, uh, who just recently retired after Friday. She's retiring Friday? She's retiring Friday after 24 years of working in the library. Um, what an incredible, I hope she enjoys her, her retirement. Um, <laughs> and so uh, a special blessing for all of you who are here and all of those watching on Net TV. This is a, a, 
a long blessing, but it's a beautiful one. It's written by Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, uh, for grandparents. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary, the daughter of Saints Joachim and Anne. Look with love on grandparents the world over. Protect them. They are a source of enrichment for families, for the church, and for all of society. Support them. As they grow older, may they continue to be for their families strong pillars of gospel faith, guardians of noble domestic ideals, living treasures of sound religious traditions. Make them teachers of wisdom and courage that they may pass on to future generations the fruits of their mature human and spiritual experience. Lord Jesus, help families and society to value the presence and role of grandparents. May they me never be ignored or excluded, but always encounter respect and love. Help them to live serenely and to feel welcomed in all the years of life which you give them. Mary, mother of all the living, keep grandparents constantly in your care. Accompany them on their earthly pilgrimage and by your prayers grant that all families may one day be reunited in our heavenly homeland where you await all humanity for the great embrace of life without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless the grandparents here present and those which, watching us on TV, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. And now if the rest of us would please stand to join for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Together we pray our prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.